What else can I find? What else can I get? I'm looking for that thing. I'm looking for it. It must be somewhere. It must be somewhere. It must be somewhere. Where is it? And then you realize you're back to where you started. Grace and peace to you all in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, people of God, in today's edition of Take Care of Your Heart, I want to share with you an excerpt from a sermon I was privileged to preach back in 2017 titled Peace Before Pleasure. And if you look at the generation we're living in today, sadly, it appears that many people are lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, which is exactly what Apostle Paul told Timothy about in, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 4. But I want to encourage you to watch this message because I believe it contains some important truths that will help engage your hearts with eternal considerations, not merely external considerations. So be blessed as you watch this message right now in Jesus' name. I have observed in life that it appears what people are running after today, what people are seeking, ultimately does not satisfy them. And I can compare it to a race. I'm going to give a little example. I hope you follow me with this example. You know, our life is a race. And today you see people running after a certain thing, believing that if they reach that thing, or get that thing, or obtain that thing, somehow they will be fulfilled, or content, or satisfied. But each time they seem to reach that destination that they're seeking, before you know it, they start looking for something else. So, here I am. I'm running. Okay, now what I'm looking for at this time, I'm looking for money. Tell your neighbor money. money. Tell your other neighbor money. money. Okay, now I'm going here around the church looking for money. Striving, seeking for money. Finally, I reach my destination. I find money. Many of us in the pursuit of money have compromised our values. Many of us in the pursuit of money have gone away and astray from God's purpose for our lives. But we just feel if I can get money, I will be satisfied. If I can get money, I'll be happy. If I can get money, I'll be content. You get money, are you truly fulfilled? What, what happens then? You begin to look for something else. Here I go. Now, I've got money. I need position. I'm looking for position. I'm looking for position. I want to be the CEO. I'm not satisfied with my current situation. I want to be higher. Finally, I get to there. Some of us, in the process of looking for position, we have gone outside of God's word. Some of us have compromised. We have engaged in stealing, killing, and destruction just to get position. Some ladies have slept with their bosses just to get position. Some men have engaged in criminal activities just to get position. Finally, you get there. Are you content? Are you fulfilled? Is that what you're looking for? What happens? You begin to look for something else. Let's go. You begin to look for something else. There must be something more. I'm looking now for fame. I need fame. God, I need fame. Some of us even come to church praying for fame. We come, God, give me fame. We're looking for fame. Here we go. We're looking for fame. We're running around trying to find that fame, trying to find what we're looking for. By the time we get to the fame, what happens? Are we fulfilled? We get fame, popularity, people know us, our name is known. Are we content? I'm just asking you to check yourself. Many of us, what we are pursuing are things that ultimately cannot fulfill us. We look for fame at all costs. We are ready to do and undo just to get that thing, believing that if we have it, if we find it, if we acquire it and attain it, we'll somehow be happy. What happens? We get there in the process. We compromise our beliefs as Christians. Many of us have touched ungodly things. Our hands have been tainted. And we get the fame. Many of us, even in the process of trying to get the fame, lose our lives. How painful. By the time you get what you have been striving for and seeking for, suddenly you realize... 
is not what you're looking for. It's not enough. You're still not happy. You're still not content. You're still comparing yourself with others. You're still measuring yourself by yourself. What happens? The journey continues. You keep going. This time you say, if I can just get married, if I can marry that beautiful woman, have children, marry the handsome man, I'll be happy. We begin to run, looking for marriage, looking for a beautiful wife, looking for a handsome husband. Before we know it, what happens? I don't marry you. I've got married. Look, white wedding, traditional wedding, pictures on Facebook, everybody loves it. Now, let me ask you this question. Can marriage solve the problem of lust? Can marriage solve the problem of urge? Why is it today you see men married to beautiful wives that still go outside and sleep with someone who is ugly? Are you with me? I'm, I hope you follow what I'm saying. You see a marriage, beautiful husband, beautiful wife, and yet that man will still go outside and meet someone who is nowhere near as beautiful as their wife and meet them thinking they'll be satisfied. What happens? Their home breaks, children without father, children without mother. What you are looking for, you do not get it. What happens? What happens then? Continue the journey. And do you know what's happening at this time? Every day, we are getting older. Our hair is getting grayer. We continue the journey. What else can I find? What else can I get? I'm looking for that thing. I'm looking for it. It must be somewhere. It must be somewhere. It must be somewhere. Where is it? And then you realize you're back to where you started. You've gone all the way around and come back to where you started. And you've still not found what you're looking for. Is that not painful? To exhaust your time, your strength, your talents, your energy, your efforts in the pursuit of something that finally fails you. And all the time, what you were looking for was here, right next to you. This is a picture of what's happening in our lives today. It's very painful when you achieve all that you've achieved without peace of heart. And do you know something, brethren? What we are running after, what we are pursuing, what we are seeking, 99% of us, the riches, the fame, the, the popularity, the, 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 the position before men, not before God, all of those things we are looking for, they end at the grave. Riches end at the grave. Position ends at the grave. Popularity, fame, it ends at the grave. Both rich and poor will be buried at six feet alike. Naked I came from my mother's womb. Naked shall I return. Why are we sweating and fighting and striving for something that cannot guarantee eternity? This will bring us to the title of the message today. Peace before pleasure. Brethren, you may, you may search all over, look far and wide, left and right, travel the world. But there's only one source of peace in this world. And that is the Prince of Peace. Jesus. There's nowhere else. There's no other direction you'll find it. There's no other. Nothing can satisfy you outside of Christ. Until you experience God, there will be dissatisfaction in your life. A, a, a desire to know what happens when life is over. Let, let's turn in our Bibles to the proof text for today's message. 
So I'm going to read from John chapter 16 verse 33. And it says, Jesus is talking here, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. What does this mean? This world is full of trouble. And the only way you can pass through the troubles of this world in peace is when you are with Christ. There's no other way. The blessings of this world are a fading thing. So is the life itself on which it is bestowed. That's this world for you. Everything about this world is temporary. It's, it's, it's not lasting. We're living in an unsteady world. Look at what's happening in our society today. You can see plenty of examples of this. You look at position. We talked earlier about the pursuit of position. Many people today, there are presidents of nations at, who are the helm of the affairs of their countries who are today in prison. And you say that you want to secure your life through politics or position. There are presidents who are today in prison. There are stars in our society today who have made their name and fame all over the world. Today, they are suicide victims. Look at what's happening in the weather. You see the hurricanes, earthquakes that are striking this world. The nation that once rescued nations is now in need of rescue. What's going on? The world we are living in is unsteady, it's not stable, it's not lasting, it's not secure. And as far as you base your life on the things of this world, you can never be steady. As far as you are still seeking and pursuing and running after the things of this world, you can never be fulfilled. Because the Bible said the world in its present form is passing away. That's what's happening. Check yourself, check society, check history. They will agree to this truth. So why is it today that we still continue to seek that which we know will not fulfill us? Why? What's going on? Something we know that is poisonous, we still continue to eat it and then complain when we get sick. Today, you will realize that people in our society are no longer content. If you get two, you want four. You get four, you want eight. You get eight, you want 16. Many people today are busy trying to to change their appearance because they're not content with what God has blessed them with. You see people that uh, uh, God has created them in a certain color. They want to change their color, want to bleach, want to change. You see some people, God has blessed them with hair. They're adding more hair on their hair. We're not content today. We want to add more to this, take more from this. If we have this latest gadget, this latest technology, before we know it, we want the late next one. The new car comes out, we want to get it. We have a beautiful car we've been praying for for years. But the moment a new latest model comes out, we want another one. For how long will you continue to run after things that will never satisfy you? And you know what's happening today? People are now coming to church and bringing their selfish ambitions to the house of God. People come to church, you see them worship, you see them praise, you see them pray, but what they are seeking is still the same things that will not fulfill them. The prayers that we offer in church many times are centered on what we can get from God, not who God is. We want results, not relationship. We want the fruits, not the root. You want God's results, but you're not ready for God's processes. You want it now. You don't care how it comes. You want it now. But what if God knows you are not yet ready for that blessing? What if God knows if that blessing comes to your life, it may likely produce a temptation that will lead you away from Him? 
Do you think God will not withhold the blessing until you are spiritually ready? What am I trying to say, brethren? Even in the church, we've turned the church to a place where we're busy seeking what we want from God, not what God wants for us. Today, when the man of God offers mass prayer, he'll begin to say, Breakthrough! People will say, Amen. He says, Breakthrough in your health. People will say, Amen. Breakthrough in your spiritual life. People will say, Amen. Breakthrough in your finances. Amen! <laughs> But if you have finances without peace, can you enjoy it? If you have big blessings in your business without the relationship with God to guide you, can you manage it? Why can't we come back down and start from the right foundation? We're so consumed by building and not concerned by the foundation we are building on. And the Bible says, the wise man builds his house upon the rock. For when the storms and troubles and temptations and trappings of this world come, the building will stand strong. But the foolish man builds his house upon the sand. And he may build an elaborate, beautiful mansion, reaching to the skies, filled with the latest technology, gadgets and gizmos. But when the storms of life come, what you've built for years can be destroyed in seconds. This is the reason today people have hypertension. You see people living in a mansion as if they are living in a bush. Do you know what I mean by that? You have everything on the outside, but you don't have peace on the inside. You have fear, worry, anxiety. These things are holding you in bondage. And once again, I'm not here to condemn. I'm not here to judge. I'm simply calling you to a period of self-examination. You cannot afford to remain the same. For how long? For how long will we continue to run to church? And yet our life does not reflect peace. We're still not content. We're, not, we're, we're afraid. We're, we're still busy running after the things that we know cannot actually guarantee our future. And we, we pursue pleasure at the price of peace. pleasure of the flesh that you may enjoy for a moment and then bring pain for a lifetime ask Samson he will tell you he will tell you that a night of pleasure is not worth a lifetime of blindness brethren I'm not trying to tell you that you should not work for the things of this world that we need to take care of ourselves. I'm not trying to say that you should not take care of yourself or look after your appearance or such things. There's nothing wrong with this. But not at the expense of peace. How many more examples do you want to see in society, in your own life, for you to know that what you are, if, if you continue to eat those things, they will continue to poison you? What more evidence do you need before you change? For what's will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul or what will a man give in exchange for his soul Think about that. What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Let us pay any price to protect our relationship with Christ. If your hand causes you to sin, what should you do? Cut it off. 
It's nonsense to confess Jesus and behave in a contrary manner. You're coming to church, reading the scriptures, but when you go back home, you seek that which is contrary to what you learn in the church. How do we know? We know because you are not content. You're not fulfilled. The evidence of true Christianity does not lie in your church attendance. How do we know those who are true children of God? When you have peace in the storm. The Bible says, in me you will have peace. In this world you will have trouble. That means the world is filled with trouble, but people of God have peace in the midst of the storm. Stillness in the midst of the chaos. Calmness in the midst of the panic and pandemonium. That's how we know children of God. Not by your tithe payments. Not by how loud you pray. Not by how fervently you worship. Not by how well you attend your services. Please attend church. But when you leave church, stay close to the head of the church, Jesus. Because only He can give you peace that surpasses all understanding. There's no other way, there's no other root, there's no other source of peace in this world but Jesus. If you could fight for peace the way you fight for politics, just imagine how your life would look like. You see people today, they are ready to fight, even draw blood, even kill for the sake of someone or something that does not even determine their destiny. You hear the news reports, people have been killed, innocent lives lost just in the pursuit of a political ambition. If you can fight for peace, the way you fight for that, do away, deal with anything in your life that is taking you away from Christ. Just imagine what your life would look like. If you can be passionate for peace, the way you show passion for your football team. I'm not saying it's bad to watch football, I'm giving an example. You see today when Manchester United, Chelsea are playing, you see the passion, you see the joy, you see the enthusiasm of people. People are even ready to fight because of football. How much more so because of peace? If you can care for peace the way you care for your handsets, the way you care for your phone, these are physical things that we fight for, we are conscious of, we know the value of. If you can do that for a material thing, how much more so peace? You can, you can care for your appearance. How much more so should you care for your hearts? No one would go out in the morning and look shabbily dressed or look unkempt. But many of us, our bodies are glowing and beautiful, but our hearts are dirty. Pay any price to protect your peace. Wow, people of God. <laughs> This is a message that really calls for sober self-examination. I mean, ask yourself in the light of this message, what is it that you are really seeking in this journey? What's your driving force? What are you really looking for? When we take a look at what's happening in society, it's clear that because of youthful lusts seeking the the treasures and the pleasures of this temporal world because of youthful lusts and misplaced priorities and other forms of human rebellion so many people today are living their lives without reference to God and what's happening people are drifting 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 from their divine destiny until they come to a dead end. Don't wait for that to happen to you before you realize just how much you need God. Don't wait for consequences, repercussions to strike before you realize this truth that the peace given by Christ is infinitely more valuable than anything that this world has to offer. In fact, it is simply incomparable. 
whatever this world has to offer, people of God, it's time bound. But that which comes from Christ is eternal. Never trade what is eternal for something that is merely external, just on the surface. No. Ask yourself right now. Think about it. What will you be remembered for? Is it the houses you built or the lives you built? Is it the cars you changed or the lives you changed? Is it the, the countries you visited or the destinies that you impacted? One thing is clear, people of God. If you focus on what God has called you to do, on where he has called you to go in this journey, the grace is sufficient for you to get there. So what is holding you back is not a product of your weakness or your shortcoming or your limitation. No, it's a result of your wrongful focus. I, I pray that this message today has helped all of us to prioritize peace before pleasure, cleansing before comfort. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.